My name is Robert Moss. I'm a PhD student at Stanford University, and I'm here to talk about my research on Bayesian safety validation for black box systems, uh, research done in collaboration with the autonomous aircraft company X-Wing. Autonomous flight is becoming increasingly popular, and we want to ensure that these autonomous aircraft, whether they fly cargo or they fly people, are safe. Because these aircraft are a combination of many different systems, we want to target different subsystems to ensure that the probability that they fail is low. Now, one such subsystem would be the image-based neural network used to detect runways to augment localization on landings. And here's an example video showing the output of the neural network as it detects the runway on an approach to land. Now, testing that system based on runway images and videos can be difficult as we may not be able to fly all of the scenarios we want to stress. So we rely on simulated tests, here using the X-Plane Flight Simulator showing several different nominal and off-nominal cases, and one potentially dangerous-to-fly scenario. Now the research question I'm trying to answer is this. Can we accurately and efficiently estimate the probability of failure of a safety-critical subsystem? Now to break this down further, accurately means we have high confidence in the estimate and provide coverage of our design space to reduce uncertainty. Efficiently means we achieve this in a small number of samples. To estimate the probability of failure, we need to search for likely failures. We have to falsify the system and search for likely failures under a model of the environment the aircraft is likely to operate in. And lastly, we have to address the case that the subsystem may be computationally expensive to run, so we can't simply test millions of inputs. The problem of safety validation can be broken down into three tasks, each with increasing difficulty. The first task, falsification, is to find any input that results in a failure. The second task, most likely failure analysis, is to find the most likely inputs that lead to failure given the model of the system's operating environment. And lastly, failure probability estimation produces a distribution of failures to then estimate the probability that the system will fail in its operating environment. The focus of this research is on failure probability estimation, but in solving this problem, we actually solve all three problems. This is because when we generate a distribution of failures, in that process we falsify the system by finding failures, and we can compute the most likely failure from the set of inputs that make up this failure distribution. In black box safety validation, the assumption is that we can only pass an input to the system and observe outputs. And most of the literature indicates a failure as the real valued output of the system being above some cost threshold C. And in general, we can apply modifications to standard Bayesian optimization to solve these problems. But the system that we're dealing with is actually the more restrictive case where the system outputs just a Boolean indicator value of whether it failed or not. To address this more restrictive case, we can fit the Gaussian process to the binary outputs by constructing the GP to predict probabilities. We use the GP to predict logits and then convert back through a sigmoid or inverse logit to get the predicted y hat. So this is no longer a maximization problem, and the way we address this is threefold. First, we want to search for failures and reduce uncertainty by covering the design space. If we have some design space here, x1 and x2, we want to find points that lead to failures, and we want to fit the surrogate to these individual points. The second objective is we want to refine the failure boundaries. If we have a failure boundary here, we want to select points on the boundary so that we can iteratively refine the boundary closer to truth. And lastly, we want to refine the likely failure regions. So if we have a failure boundary defined over this space, and we have our operational models which show how likely the point x1 and x2 would be, we can get the joint distribution, and we can see that the shaded region closer to the center of the joint distribution is the likely failure region here. So we want to sample in that region to produce high likely failures. The Gaussian process surrogate model is shown here, where colored contours indicate the prediction of the surrogate. Green means success, red means failure, and white is at the decision boundary. The squares represent the true outputs from the runway detector neural network, where we use X-plane images as inputs. As an example, this one corresponds to this particular glide slope and distance of runway, and this particular true observation corresponds to this glide slope and distance of runway that did not correctly detect it. Now the question is, how do we select points in this space efficiently? Now the acquisition functions that are the crux of this work fulfill the three objectives that we are interested in. The first acquisition, called uncertainty exploration, is a simple idea. Explore areas with high uncertainty to provide coverage and to search for other failure regions. Here we pick the point with maximal uncertainty over our design space. As an example, if you look on the right, we have the surrogate, and if we fade into what the acquisition function looks like, the lighter areas are those where we have high uncertainty, and we can see around the likely region we have very low uncertainty. So there are areas here we want to continue to explore, noting that we will cover the full design space in the limit of infinite samples. The next acquisition function, called boundary refinement, refines failure boundaries to better characterize all failure regions. The idea here is that because our surrogate is modeled as a sigmoid, we can get the analytical derivative where this is maximized when the prediction is 0.5 right at the boundary. 
Then you can also fo first focus on refining operational likely boundaries and then relax or decay that restriction over time. As an example here, you see that the boundary is actually all the way across, but the influence of the operational model shows that we want to first focus on the boundary here early in the search, then we refine the entire boundary in the limit. Finally, the third acquisition function, called failure region sampling, samples from the theoretically optimal Q proposal distribution to refine likely failure regions. The optimal proposal distribution is one that is proportional to the output of the system times its likelihood. Intuitively, this is the distribution over likely failures. So if the output of the system is 1 for failures, we multiply that by the likelihood model, uh, and this is going to sample proportional to the region of likely failures. But the problem here is that f is exactly what we're trying to avoid calling numerous times, and we actually don't know the failure region itself. So instead, we can use the surrogate f hat, take the upper confidence bound on our surrogate as an overestimation, and compute the failure region's g hat, and then we can sample from that new distribution here. What this looks like first is showing the binary failure boundary as g hat, and then we can overlay this distribution. Now this shows that this region here is the likely failure distribution that we want to sample from. But what we can also do is generalize this to systems that don't just indicate 1 or 0, but actually have more information in the prediction itself. So here we weight our failure distribution given the confidence information from the true system. And again, this works for both types of systems, the restrictive binary case and the non-restrictive probabilistic valued case. All three acquisition functions together we call failure search and refinement. The question we now have is how do we efficiently estimate the probability of failure given this surrogate? Well, we can use important sampling. Our problem is defined as an expectation over the operational model P, but because failures may be rare, we instead sample from an alternative distribution Q called the proposal and evaluate using the surrogate over samples from Q. Here we use a discrete distribution across the domain for Q to simplify the problem, but future work could focus on selecting a better proposal distribution. The proposed algorithm, called Bayesian Safety Validation, or BSV, first takes as input some black box function F and some operational model P, and using the failure search and refinement acquisition functions, we acquire a set of three points and then evaluate the true system to get some observations Y. We refit the surrogate model and we repeat this for T iterations. Then we return those inputs that led to failures, return the most likely failure, and using the surrogate we compute a probability of failure estimate using important sampling. We apply our algorithm to three test problems with access to ground truth. Results from our experiment show that Bayesian safety validation converges and reduces the error much faster than the other baselines, and importantly does this in orders of magnitude fewer samples. We can also see that the failure search and refinement acquisition functions outperform all other sampling schemes. Looking at the final iteration of those previous plots, we can see that the failure search and refinement acquisition functions outperform all other cases in various safety validation metrics and are comparable in input coverage. Uh, noting the orders of magnitude difference in relative error, again, this can be interpreted as the percent error in the estimate, uh, where our approach achieves less than 1% error in all cases. Now to the real-world case study, which is a neural network-based runway detection system common in autonomous flight operations. Because the system is tended to be active only during the landing phase, we condition on the aircraft being in the approach and consider failures as misdetections or false negatives. We generate a set of inputs in parametric space uh, to produce an image, and then we pass that image through the run rate detector uh, to produce a detection. Taking the final surrogate after 999 samples, we can look at the most likely failure, which is this little pocket here. You can also see some interesting cases that would be very useful to look at as developers, and we can triage by just sorting by the failure likelihoods and uh, prioritizing on fixing those first. We converge to a stable probability of failure estimate in about 400 samples, uh, and looking at the distribution of log likelihood for the observed failures, where we want the peak of this distribution to be right skewed, which says that we're finding more failures that are high likely, uh, which means that we're finding more useful failures. Now, if you look at the safety validation metrics, those that we can compute without access to truth, we can see that out of the 999 samples, about 57% of those ended up in failure. Uh, we, we provide uh, good coverage of the input space and compute the estimated probability of failure as 5.8 times 10 to the minus 3. If we instead sampled uh, directly from the observational model P, we would expect about 6 out of those 999 points to lead to failure instead of about 571 failures that we found using Bayesian safety validation. To illustrate the algorithm in action, here's an animation of all 999 iterations. It starts by exploring the uncertainty and refining the high likely decision boundaries. And as it starts to speed up, we can visualize the exploration of the uncertainty over the whole space. We can see that the boundary refinement is starting to extend out into the limit across the entire failure boundary. Uh, we can also see that we're sampling from the failure region to produce more likely failures as well as refine that distribution over that failure space. Uh, which ultimately is used to compute an accurate estimate of the probability of failure.
All of this work is open source as a Julia package, and thank you very much for listening.